For so long, the conversation around this roster has been about the lack of size and athleticism. Steve Kerr himself talked about it last week, quote, for us to take the next step, Wiggs, JK, and Gary have to be the athletes that they are. They have to provide the force and speed, offensive rebounds, driving to the hoop, getting fouled, easy baskets. It rounds out our team. And so we deem them the X factors for this season. You know kind of what you're going to get with the core vets, right? What are we going to get from those guys? So I thought we'd take a look at those three and where they're at after, you know, two weeks of, of games here. What are we, seven, eight games into the season? It's early, but let's start with GP2. He has been closing games. He has been closing games because he checks in and turns the other team's main character into an NPC, right? He puts them, you, it's funny. Have you, when, have you noticed when he checks in, how you can see guys' body language change because before they even blow the whistle, he gets into their body. He comes and he puts his hands on them before the, it's even a live ball. You know, it, it's a tactic I'm sure he learned from his father. You see a lot of elite defenders do that. Just make people uncomfortable. Take their space away. Constantly put your hands on them. Pause, right? But GP2 um, just makes plays down the stretch. He's a, he's a menace. He's a defensive demon. And I don't blame these guys for, for slouching when they see him checking in to put them in jail, right? Um, shooting the three ball more confident than I've ever seen. He started off in a slump in preseason, and I think the lid came off was at that first Sacramento game where he hit a couple of them. He's even taking them above the break. He's, he's, he's shooting it confidently. Now, what I would say is GP at 30, is he 30 or just about to be 30? That is the age where you've got to start making business decisions on the court. Gentlemen, we all know first impressions matter. And if you're not taking care of your skin, that's the first thing people are going to notice. And they're going to instantly think that you're way older than you are, or you just don't care about your appearance. Show them that you do and make a great first impression with Caldera Lab, where, hey, compliments are guaranteed. I've been using their three-step program for several months now, and it's really helped even out my complexion and fade sun damage, honestly. Um, it starts with the slate, the face wash, which is the best face wash I've ever used. And I'll tell you why, because not only do you get that brand new clean feeling every time you use it, but it does it without drying out your skin. I add the base layer, the moisturizer for a nice matte finish. And then at night, the good, the secret sauce serum that, hey, I, I don't know what's in it, but I know it works. And so that three-step program in the evenings and in the mornings has become a staple of mine. And right now, for our audience, we have an exclusive offer, the best offer available anywhere. Use the code ALCHEMY at calderalab.com and get 20% off right now. Get 20% off using the code ALCHEMY at Caldera Labs and make unforgettable first impressions where compliments are guaranteed. You know, and mainly vertically at the basket. We, it was a great lob the other night in, um, was it Detroit or Cleveland? I don't know. There's been so many, so many stops already. But uh, I don't mean that that was an open air space where he could just go up and cleanly punch it. But there was the, the dunk he tried on Eubanks opening night, right? Those type of plays, he's going to have to find ways, again, to make business decisions at times, maybe go up and under and scoop and, and just, just try to preserve himself for when it matters because the durability has been an issue with GP2. It's not a toughness thing. It's not, a, it's not his body. It's his play style. So it's difficult to ask him to turn that off. He only knows how to play one way and the way he sells out for 50-50 balls, dives into the, you know, it, it's hard to turn that off. But like I'd say, that age of 30 is where guys, I think athletes, ball players start to figure out like, all right, let me not make that jump. Let me, let me, let me hold off on that. And I think we're slowly but surely seeing GP do that, at least offensively. It, it, he, has, he has really good touch considering a, he's a dunker. Right. Most dunkers, they don't play the glass or have touch. He's got decent touch. And so, yeah, he doesn't always have to dunk everything and just continue to be that menace that he is defensively. I, I think that we're going to see him actually have a career year by the numbers. He, he's, over, he's already been the defensive guy, but the way, again, he's confidently shooting that three ball and how much opportunity he's getting. So he's just got to preserve himself and, and know, you know, know when it, it ain't worth it. Much easier said than done with someone with his motor. Let's go over to Wiggins here. I, I'm, I'm almost kind of tired of talking about it already, 
right? But we're all speculating and, and a lot of the fan base is like defending, hey, leave Wiggins alone. And no, we're not bailing on him, but listen, you, it's a thing. It's absolutely a thing. The last thing that I will throw out about this, since we don't really know what's going on, we're all guessing here, is, is it a lifestyle thing? And all I can do is speak from experience. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but is Andrew a vegan or a vegetarian? And I'm not trying to bring up a, a debate on this. I know from personal experience of trying that, like Chris Paul, I know, does that type of stuff. Again, everybody's different. So that's where it's, it's very subjective. Your experience could be different from someone else's. But what I'll say is for a six foot eight, you know, 215 pound NBA athlete, I imagine it's really hard to get the proper nutrition if that's the route you take, the proper protein. And, and sometimes you don't know that you're not feeling optimal until you change it, right? And in my experience has been in, you know six months, a couple months here, and I probably wasn't doing it properly. But could it perhaps be a lifestyle thing as far as his nutrition and his sleep and all that stuff that has him feeling lackadaisical and not as strong, not as much pop? Because y'all have corrected me, he's 28 years old. But my point still stands. 26, 28 years old, he still should be in his physical prime. So that, that that's just just a thought. But what I'll say about something that I that that's more basketball related and on the court is maybe he should take the Clay Thompson approach to breaking out of this shooting slump. Just shoot your way out of it. Just shoot. And I know he's not built like that. He's not wired like that, right? But when would you be all right if? hypothetically, let's say Saturday against the Cavs, Wiggins just put up 20 shots. Just every time he caught, he just put it up. That might be, sometimes you maybe have to desensitize that yourself to the slump and just let it fly, let it fly right? That's Clay's philosophy every night, right? But um, it, it's much harder, I think, and talking, you know, he's, he's, he's shooting downhill and in the paint, but I'm talking more about that three ball. It's much harder to break out of a slump when you're just like taking it here and there. Right, he's take you take one, you take two a game. Oh, you had three. If he can get up five or six, maybe he just he can catch a flow. That that just a thought on that one. But we will continue to wait on Wigs. Right, what other option do we have? Kaminga, J.K. has had. I, I think he's had a decent start. I, I'm I'm very happy that he's in the rotation consistently. Not not happier than he is. I'm sure. Right. But people have been throwing around the stat of how poorly he starts and how strongly he finishes. And he comes out in first halves, he's had trouble, and then later he, he plays better. What I see is a young dude who is overzealous. I think he's a little bit over, you know, he, he, he wants it too bad at times when he comes out there and he maybe gets ahead of himself, especially with that athleticism. And again, speaking from experience, when I was – you know, 25 years old, and I was a bouncy young athlete, I used to shoot better and in turn play better after I got a little fatigued. After I took, after, you know, after I ran around and I broke a sweat and a little bit of juice left my legs, all of a sudden it naturally kind of slowed me down a little bit and let me play at a better pace. And that might be happening with Kaminga. I think some of it is just a zealousness, but also a young bouncy guy take a little juice out of the legs and now he's playing with pace and he's playing at the pace that's more optimal, optimal, excuse me, more efficient. Um, talked about it in the breakdowns, the, the post work, it, it's, it's ironic. He's such a naturally strong and explosive player. You remember Andre said he's the strongest 18 year old I've ever been around. Right. And so when you're naturally that strong, you tend not to use technique well. And as much as he bullies people in the paint and all this stuff, his technique isn't sound. And he's very upper body reliant. He, he uses his shoulders and his upper body to create space in the post. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, optimally, it's your hips, right? Like you saw him turn the ball over a couple times recently on spin moves and stuff like that, where he gets off balance. It's because it's all upper body. He's trying to lean in and knock you around with his shoulders. You got to spin wide base and use your hips to create that space. And then you stay on balance. And it's exciting that he's this effective without really having good technique. And if he can get, you know, start to use his hips more and play a little bit lower down in his hips in the post, the sky is the limit. He, he, he's going to he's gonna dominate there. So I think, yeah, 
I, I, I'm excited to see him continue to grow and get the opportunity. Shout out to Kerr for letting him play through those, those rough first halves. And I don't know if there's really a solution. Maybe he could, you know, depending on his gas tank, have a, um, what I would say is have a, a, a stronger pregame. So shoot around and in your warm-up pregame, drain yourself a little more since he's got so much in the tank, right? And so that way he maybe starts out playing at that pace. But it just comes with experience, right? It just comes with experience. Now, Kerr brought those three guys up because they play heavier minutes. But potentially, could we not add Trace Jackson Davis to this list of young athletes, be the athletes that they are? Because Trace is certainly an athlete. He continues to get opportunity. I thought he did pretty well against Jokic. What can you do against Jokic, right? What you can do is make him work on the other end, rim run him, run up and down the floor. And, you know, he just continues. He has a presence out there and a strength and a pop that you immediately notice. And that's a really good sign when you, from a young big man, right? And both he and Podjemski, they, when you talk about the rebounding and size issue, they help us team rebound even when they don't get the rebounds, Dad. If you pay attention, just them, you know, going up for the rebound, being physical, putting a body on somebody, they don't always gather the rebound, but a lot of the time it leads to us getting the rebound or loose ball. And ain't nothing like a, you know, like a young, a young athlete, right? That's just willing to do that all the time and has the energy to do so. So, I think that presumably Trace could be added to that mix, especially when you consider the fact that he he could the way Dario and Draymond shoot the three now, you know, Draymond, but Dario always has, but the way they're shooting it, he could play alongside both of them. And all of a sudden, we're not that small. And so hopefully Saturday night against Cleveland, you know, we we see more Trace maybe earlier on to com, you know, to counter that that jumbo lineup with Jared Allen and, and Evan Mobley. And, and again, lean into the athleticism of, of some of our youth here. As far as Denver goes the other night, I think it, it's the rare good L. We can all agree. No Draymond, no GP2, right? Obviously, no Jamal Murray. But throughout the game, I kept waiting for them to kind of just knock us out, right? I was waiting for the knockout punch and for them to gain separation. And we just battled and battled and battled. Obviously, some calls didn't go our way down the stretch. Hey, they're the champs at home. That, that's how it's going to be. And then Steph, late, I thought he got caught between playing the glass and trying to flip it over the front of the rim. You know, anytime you're going to go underhand with your offhand, I preferably you use the glass. Now, I don't think he had the angle to use the glass. He didn't get all the way to the left side, but he was too far away to just finger roll it over the front of the rim. So he kind of flipped it up. And I mean, that, that was tough. That, that was tougher to me then the, the the game winner over Chet. I know that there was, there's photos of him f- like flipping that over Chet and it looks really good. But the truth is to play the glass there, you're putting that up high anyway. This one was much more awkward angle and, and distance from the rim in my opinion, but we move. Now, as far as this second game against the Cavs tomorrow evening, what I would say is attack Darius Garland early and often. But, I mean, he's going to be out there killing killing us on, on one end. You got to kill him on the other end. Make him switch or, or put them in a predicament. I don't think that we did that early enough in Cleveland last week. And then I had brought this up before. I would exchange hitting the offensive glass for getting back in transition. Gave up a lot of transition threes to Donovan Mitchell. They get out and run in their athletes like that. I wouldn't send everybody to the old glass against this particular matchup because they're already so big. I think it's just kind of a losing battle. But those would be my two adjustments headed into that matchup. Draymond, GP2 should be back. We got a ton of home games coming up where I expect to rack up a bunch of wins. As always, hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all. 